What's up, doll fans? It's your boy Dylan again. Uh, I know I just did a video uh, just a short while ago. You know, today's episode of uh, Dolphins with Dylan, but uh, there's a little more. Uh, obviously, training camp just began, so there's going to be a flurry of things, lots of stuff coming out, uh, and obviously, I'm going to want to try and get it all out to you as fast as I possibly can. So. You know, uh, but I am going to do my best to, you know, consolidate everything, get it out to you promptly, but, you know, try and keep the amount of videos and stuff to a minimum, not trying to post a video every 10 minutes or every hour or whatever. But uh, anyway, there's a couple other things that I want to want to touch on real quick, a couple more articles and some stuff being said. Uh, first is an article that came out on the Palm Beach Post, NFL National Anthem Policy. Kenny Stills, Robert Quinn want free speech. The simplest and most, and by the way, I'm, I'm bringing this because uh, this is stuff that came from the player interviews that they had on like the sidelines and stuff that I wasn't able to get video of, but this is information coming out from those interviews. So it is definitely, uh, you know, something to, to check out and, and get. Uh, the simplest and most ideal solution Kenny Stills is offering amid the NFL's national anthem policy debate is to get rid of it altogether. The league and the NFL PA are discussing revisions to the rules the owners enacted in March, and the mandate for players to stand or stay out of sight is on hold for now. The two Dolphins players who have demonstrated in the past, Stills and defensive end Robert Quinn, are waiting for that resolution until they decide how they'll handle the anthem this season. But if they had a say, it'd be an easy choice. It's just one thing. It's called freedom of speech, Quinn said when asked what should happen. Simple as that. It's freedom of speech. Uh, Stills agreed, saying, obviously, uh, obviously I'd like to see there be no policy at all, and the guys have a choice to go out there and do what they want to do, and we can support each other in the decisions we want to make. This was the first time Quinn and Stills have spoken to the media since the Dolphins drew national attention last week when an Associated Press report indicated they submitted documents listing suspension as a possible penalty to... Uh, for a possible penalty for violating the anthem rules. The team later said it hasn't made a decision on the policy yet, and the NFL and the union are continuing to discuss a potential resolution. Dolphins coach Adam Gase said he's waiting until something comes down from the league, but can't envision a player being suspended over the national anthem. The impasse didn't stop Cowboys owner Jerry Jones from declaring that his players will be required to stand for the anthem and won't have the option of remaining out of sight. Because we all know Jerry Jones is a bigot as well as, you know, people like Donald Trump, his friend. I wouldn't expect anything different, still said of Jones. Quinn and Stills said there hasn't been much dialogue with management about the issue and their attention is centered on preparing for the upcoming season. The Dolphins open training camp today and, and play their first preseason pre game August 9th at home against Tampa Bay. Stills has worked frequently with owner Stephen Ross in social justice efforts and appears to have had a good relationship with him during his four years playing for the Dolphins. He hasn't spoken much with Ross about the national anthem issue since last season. Quinn, who came in on a trade with the Rams this offseason, says he's never discussed it with Ross. No one brought it up, Quinn said. Until we have a discussion, that's just where it is right now. If the topic comes up, then it comes up. But right now, I'll hold my opinion to myself and try to do my best to make this football team better. While Stills kneeled the last two seasons, Quinn raised a fist during the anthem last year. The NFL's no kneeling policy did not specifically address an action like Quinn's, though it could be covered under the requirement to stand and show respect for the flag and the anthem. And I would venture to guess that's why they put it like that, so that way they could just be like, oh, well, uh, you can't do that either because you're showing disrespect for the flag. Fine. Fucking bullshit. Anyway, uh, let's see. What else did I have? What else did I have? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, right here. Uh, okay, uh, another article from the Palm Beach Post. Miami Dolphins quarterback Brock Osweiler. I had my best spring ever. Brock Osweiler threw two interceptions in his first training camp practice as a Miami Dolphin. My deal isn't getting so much into the results, Osweiler said after Thursday's practice. I like to focus on the process. So was today perfect? No. But it's all about getting a little bit better every single day. Focus on the process. And if you focus on that rather than the results, come December or January, you're going to be where you want to be. Well, I don't know about that. You're a quarterback and you definitely got to produce results. Fails is going to win anyway. But, uh... It's good that he's staying focused and not getting, you know, down on himself and stuff. Osweiler wasn't sharp Thursday, but he said he was very, very pleased with how things went in organized team activities. I was very happy with the spring, he said. The spring went very well. In fact, I would say it was my best spring as a pro. That was spring ball, and now we're into the real thing. And this is really what matters. This is really what counts. 
Osweiler is an underdog to David Fells in the backup competition to back up Ryan Tannehill. Coach Adam Gase was in Denver when Osweiler was drafted, so the Dolphins took a flyer on a quarterback who had struggled the last two seasons. Going back to the fundamentals, Osweiler said, I'm obviously a taller quarterback. I'm 6'7", and with that comes long levers. It's almost like a golf swing. The more movement you have, the taller you are, slight knee bend. Coach, Ad or Coach Gase is always talking about flat shoulders with me. Excuse me, moving levers. So it's really just trying to find a consistent throwing motion within uh, being compact. Osweiler seemed to regain uh, a bit of his confidence in the spring after rough stints in Houston, especially, and after returning to Ven Denver. I'm not looking in the past whatsoever, he said. The NFL is all about your current season, and right now I'm focused on the 2018 season. Trying to be the best quarterback I can possibly be. Not worried about depth charts. Right now it's about being here, present in Miami, making the most of this opportunity. Osweiler has an unwavering admiration for Gase. I think he's a phenomenal football coach, Osweiler said. I think he's a great person. I think he sets a great culture. A culture is everything in professional sports. Coming in the building every day and having an opportunity to work with Coach Gase again is very special, and I'm making the most of it. And he is definitely right about that. Culture means a lot, and that's why you know everybody downplaying the Gase and the organization wanting to build a specific culture is, is absolutely ridiculous. But, um, you know, whatever, man. That shit is real. It's happening. And it's definitely going to, you know, lead to production on the football field. And, you know, it's like I've said before. You don't have to, you don't have, to have an environment like, you know, Bill Belichick and the Patriots. It doesn't have to be, you know, a pain in the ass and suck and not be fun. You can have, uh, you know... Uh, an environment where you're friends with your coach as well as you know his employee basically where you can have both of those relationships wrapped up into one where you can have fun and still be competitive and still be efficient and still you know perform at a high level all right so now i got one quick thing from uh dolphins.com it's john can jimmy's takeaways from the first day of training camp three takeaways uh, number one, setting the tempo. It was extremely hot and humid as the Miami Dolphins took to the practice field in Davie on Thursday morning. That's normal for this time of year, and it's what everyone expects living in South Florida. Another thing that this team expects to occur at this time of year is setting the bar high when it comes to their effort and execution. This group gave both on day one, and it was terrific to see the team build upon the foundation that was established during the spring. The first practice wasn't as clean or crisp as I was hoping for, but guys were flying around making plays on both sides of the ball. Players making plays. Number two, I didn't. It didn't take long for fans to respond when starting quarterback Ryan Tannehill found wideout Danny Amendola on a crossing route early in the practice. There was a loud cheer, and hopefully, this new connection with will give Dolphins fans more to get excited about this fall. Amendola's experience in running routes and uh, idling down against zone coverage will benefit Tannehill immediately. On the other side of the ball, second-year or linebacker Chase Allen came up with the first interception of training camp. A pass that was intended for receiver Jakeem Grant was broken up by Corey, uh, corner Tory McTire. The ball found its way into Allen's grasp and he was off to the races for a would-be touchdown. Position battles. Number three. Although many positions look to be locked down, there are certainly plenty of opportunities for players to make their claim for more playing time. A couple of spots to watch during training camp in the preseason games are a cornerback, linebacker, and defensive line. There will be a constant rotation at all of these spots during the first two weeks of camp, and it will be interesting to see which players get second and third looks to make an immediate impact. A couple of guys to watch at each position are cornerbacks Torrey McTire and Tony Lippett, linebackers Terrence Garvin and Chase Allen, and a defensive line with Cameron Malbo and Vincent Taylor. So there you have it. There's a little bit more for you. Uh, I hope that could add to your knowledge base. I hope you liked it. If you like it, please subscribe, share it with your friends, post it on Facebook, leave comments, so on and so forth. And this is just going to be a quick hit version of uh, the show just to add to you know what I gave you a little bit earlier. So I hope you guys like it, and I'll see you again soon. Fins up.